Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Alejandra and today I want to share with you a solution that I provided a few weeks ago to a question that I received in one of my channels. The question is, how can I split the information that I receive in only one column where I have the name of the container in one line and the date on the other line? I want to split this information into two columns where I have one column for the container name and one column for the date. So I'm going to show you the solution with Power Query today. And later on in another video, I will show you the solution using Excel functions. So let's start. This is the goal. I need to split this information into two columns, having the container and the date. I'm going to right click to my column uh, with, with the original information and I'm going to select get data from table range. I'm using Microsoft 365. You can also go to the data tab and click at from table range. The Power Query Editor will open. As I said, I'm using Microsoft 365, Control Shift Close to zoom in. On the left, you see that I have two solutions already. One using uh, index columns, integer divide, modulo, pivoting columns. We don't need to do all of that. There is a better uh, way to do this with list alternate. Uh, it's much simpler, it's more straightforward. And for that reason, let's see what list alternate does. List alternate returns a list comprised of all the odd numbered offset elements in a list. Alternate between taking and skipping values from the list depending on the parameters. We need to provide the count, which specifies the numbers of values that are skipped each time. And then we have two optional parameters, repeat interval and optional repeat interval to indicate how many values are added in between the skipped values and offset. An option offset parameter to begin skipping the values at the initial offset. At the initial offset, sorry. So let's go and see the structure of this function. The function is asking for a list. Is asking for the count as nullable number, and then we'll ask for two optional parameters. We can provide or not these two parameters. The repeat interval and the offset need to be provided as nullable numbers. Let's see some example. I have example one where I need to create a list one to ten that skips the first number. So list alternate, we provide the list from one to ten, and it's going to skip the first item. For that reason, you can see that the result of that list is all the numbers except for number one. The next example is asking to create a list from one to ten that skips every other number. In this case, we're going to provide the first optional parameter and we're going to provide number one. So by doing this, we're going to skip every other number. For that reason, you can see that the only numbers that we will get as a result is 2, 4, 6, 8. Okay. We're skipping 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. In the next example, we are going to create a list that starts at number 1 and it's going to skip every other number. In this case, we're going to provide the second optional parameter and we're going to provide Number one, we want to start from the first item in our list, and that is number one in this list. We start from there, and we are going to skip every other number because we provided this parameter telling the function to do that, and we're skipping two, four, six, eight, and ten. Okay, let's go to our example. Here, Power Query created um, my query with the name table one. Is the name of the table. I can change it. I can double click there and I'm going to change it as demo. And on the right, I can see that I have two steps. One is the source and the other one is change type. And this is Power Query change the data type in this uh, column. So I'm going to delete this step. Uh, I don't need it right now. And I'm going to hide the queries uh, on the left. So we have more room here and Control C plus to zoom in a little bit more. You can see that here I have a column. I have my table with one column. 
When I want to convert this column into a list, to do that, I can go to the formula bar at the end. I can provide one set of square brackets and provide the name of the column that I want to convert or transform into a list. From there, I'm going to press enter. It gave me an error because I didn't provide the name, the name correctly. So now that I provide it properly, now you can see that our column original is transformed into a list. Okay, from there, I'm going to create another step. I'm going to click with FX here on the formula bar, on the left of the formula bar. After the equal, I'm going to say list alternate. This. Open parenthesis, and it's going to ask me for a list. I already have a list that is coming from my step source, which is the list that I'm seeing here. After the word source, after my step source, I'm going to provide a comma, and I can provide my first uh, and I can provide my count parameter, which is one. And I'm going to close parentheses and I'm going to press enter. As you can see, as the example that we were looking at before, I have skipped the first item on my list. Now, what I want to do is I want to skip every other number. So I'm going to go to the end and press enter. Now, what I did is I'm skipping all the container names by telling this function that I want to skip the first item and then I want to skip every other item. Now let's say if I didn't want to skip the first item, if I want to start from the first item on the list, I provide the last parameter and I press enter. Now you can see that here I get the list of all the container names. Now I can convert this list into a table. So how we're gonna do that? Very simple, after the equal, I'm gonna say table from columns, open parenthesis, it's gonna ask me for the list as list. Well, to tell Power Query that some information is a list, I need to provide the curly bracket. My first list is coming from list alternate with all the parameters, right? And I'm going to provide a comma to separate from the other list. And my other list will be up to here. Control V to paste, close parentheses for the uh, list alternate for the second one, close the curly brackets for the list, and close the parentheses for the list alternate. And I'm going to press Enter. Now you can see that I have my column for the containers and my column for the dates. I can double click here and change the, the column name, or I can use the parameter that I have from the table from columns. I can provide the columns as any. I'm going to provide the curly brackets, and inside of the curly brackets, I'm going to provide the name of the columns. And here will be container name. And the other one, I'm going to uh, provide the comma and another um, quotation marks, and I'm going to provide date. I'm going to go to the end, and I'm going to press Enter. And now you see that, that I have the names of my columns properly. So I'm ready to pass this into Excel. I can change the data type now if I want to, or I can just move this to, to Excel. Home, close and load, close and load to. And I'm going to provide that information here as a table. I'm going to provide that on the existing on the existing worksheet will be here on J2. Uh, I say OK. And now I have my information with one column for the container, one column for the date. I have numbers here. That's fine. I need to convert this into a date. So I'm going to select the, here all the dates. Uh, Control 1 to open the format sales box. I want date. OK. And now I have the information that I need split into columns. Let's say I want to add another two containers here. And here. I have container 10 and 11. I go back to my solution, the one that we just did from the demo query. I'm going to right click inside of my table and I'm going to say refresh. You can see that I have that information updated with the two, two new um, containers. Because I was into this table only, right click and refresh, I only refresh this table. 
If I want to refresh the other table, I need to do the same. Let's say I'm going to press Ctrl Z to set to undo. I'm going to go to data and I'm going to refresh all. And now you see if I do that, all my tables will refresh. So this is the solution that I provided using Power Query. Um, next time, I will show you how the solution is with functions in Excel. Uh, we're going to use the functions um, sequence, count A, and index. And stay tuned for the next video. I hope you found this information useful. If you like it, please give the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also, share with anybody that you believe can benefit from it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.